All right, all right. You are looking at Ableton Live for beginners. This course is going to be totally focused on just getting started. And before you judge yourself as ye lacking of knowledge, just remember that it's beginners that shake up the music industry. So I'm going to help you learn Ableton. And in two years, some of you are going to be using this very program to stomp the competition. So that's the intended goal. Okay, at the beginning of every discussion about a piece of software is the install and which part of it to install. And when you go up to ableton.com, you're going to form an account and you'll be, depending on what you've done, if you've asked to do the free trial, you could do that. If you've done Live9 Standard, you could do that. If you've bought Live9 Suite, this is what your account will look like. And the add-on of Max for Live. Don't, don't look at any of this. The most important thing, whether you have Live9 Suite or Standard, is this discussion here, whether or not you download the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version. And it's real simple. If your computer has more than 4 gigs of RAM, like I do, then you could, and I emphasize could, benefit from 64-bit version of Live. More than likely, you're going to benefit from the 32-bit. Why? Look at this that comes right off of Ableton's website. 32-bit, we recommend using 32-bit version of Live for most cases. The only reason that you would possibly use 64-bit install is for systems that have more than 4 gigs of RAM installed. Why? Well, go up there and read all about it at Ableton.com. But the, the closed caption version of this thing is that a lot of the plugins and stuff are not yet stable in 64-bit systems. But for reals, this little myths and facts section of Ableton's website will get you straight. Okay? The other discussion is what do I have installed and how much of it is there? When we open up live, we're faced with this very scenario here, two MIDI tracks, two audio tracks. We'll get into that. But when you open up this browser tab, you will go into a standard install of live, and you'll see everything in here except for the drum racks under instruments. And under audio effects, you'll probably see most of these things, although on live nine standard, I'm not sure. Just to clarify, the difference between suite and standard is like a hotel. Standard is a mattress and a place to sleep, and suite is better than that. Max for Live is a whole other can of worms that uh, comes from Max DSP. It's a separate company, but it's building software for within Live. You're likely to, even if you have Max for Live installed, you're going to look at this and go, what is all that crap that he's got in there? And... This is because of this discussion of packs. In here, you'll see that I have lots of packs. And you'll go up to the website at Ableton, and you'll see some of these various add-ons. And you can buy these at extra charge. Now, what happens when a pack is grayed out? I particularly let this happen this way so we could show you. I can find out if I have it installed. And here under my music folder, and there's an Ableton folder. Don't be confused by that orange thing. I just changed the icon. In here is factory packs. And it's asking me to locate the folder for Loopmaster's mixtape. I'll do so. It shows that that's a 3.5 gig file. So by saying open, this should reconnect Loopmaster's mixtape with my Ableton install, and sure enough, it does. And I will do this for drum machines. Right-click, locate, pack. And hopefully it's in here. And yes, it's there. It's smaller, 4338 megs. Locate this. And there it is. I have all my packs correctly installed, etc., etc. Okay, and like any software, you can always check for updates. And I'm not going to hit this because I don't have a live internet connection where I'm sitting in this vocal booth. All right, so that is installation 32-bit versus 64-bit. 
the installation of packs, uh, the ability to check for updates, and always Ableton.com.